Hi everyone, this is Apostle Misha Softier welcoming you to tonight's Tuesday edition of Study in the Word. And we normally get going at 8, but had to run it a little bit late to 8.30. So I appreciate you joining me this evening. And we've got a great uh, topic to talk about tonight because we're going to talk about denying yourself and enduring hardship. And um, I, I trust that this is going to be a great... Uh, a lesson for you this evening. So before we get underway, as I wait for uh, different uh, people to sign in, um, I want to remind you, uh, make a few announcements if I can, and remind you to please, if you have friends, hit your share button if this message has been a blessing to you, because there are uh, probably a number of people in every one of your friend lists that are going through things and they're looking for answers, and they're they're look, they they're going through it through uh, uh, things, and we've got the answer for them here in the Word of God. So the best thing that you can do sometimes, especially if you don't know how to say it yourself, is hit the share button because there's a lot of people out there. I'll never have the opportunity probably to minister to personally, but if you can get them over here to this site and they can listen to the Word of God, believe me, it may be the thing that breaks them through, and you'll be passing the message to them. The other thing is. Hit your like buttons, folks, because it's an encouragement to me, and it draws other people in to listen to the Word when they see them. Okay, and that's what we want to do. All right, <clears throat> so uh, the other announcement I've got to make is, let's see, two of the books I've written, Escape from Apostasy and Escape from Your Past, are now um, being displayed in Barnes & Noble bookstores. At least they're starting out here in Yuma. Hopefully they'll spread to some of the others. They can be purchased anywhere books are sold, online, and through Amazon.com, or, or Amazon, which is my publisher, by going to Amazon.com. Uh, I am in the process now of writing a third book called The Responsibilities and Diligence of the End Time Minister, and uh, that'll be a, an excellent book, and I'm already into that. Hopefully, it'll be ready to go by the holiday season, or maybe a little bit after that. just depends on... Uh, how much I can get done. Okay, so that's all the announcements. So let's get into what we want to talk about this evening. All right, so tonight's message, as I said right at the beginning, is denying yourself and enduring hardship. Now, that might seem maybe negative. Maybe people would rather hear about, you know, great prophecies of the end time and all the the, the, the things that seem to be... Um, I don't want to say more joyful. Maybe not. might seem like more of an um, uh, interesting topic for some. But really, if you really understand what we're about to get into, this is probably one of the most important uh, topics that we've ever had on Study the Word because it's very, very important for everyone. Whether you're in pulpit ministry or whether you're, you're just a supposed Christian, you know, Understand that all Christians are ministers because we do all are called to do the work of an evangelist. So this applies to you too. So we want to get right into it. So tonight I want to ask you to turn with me in your Bibles uh, to the book of Matthew, chapter 16. And I'm going to say a few words uh, about this as the Lord leads it through the Holy Spirit. Let me open up with prayer right now. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity to bring your word uh, this evening. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'll anoint, anoint me by the power of your Holy Spirit to speak what it is those that are listening need to hear. Lord, you said my words are spirit in their life. And I pray, Lord, that you'll plant your word as a seed upon the hearts of those that hear and that it bears fruit. In Jesus' name, and I thank you for it. Amen, amen. God bless you, Lorraine. It's good to see you on this evening. And I know there's others signing on. I can't see you right now. But you can send up some flares if you want to make any comments. Um, if I can read them and uh, it's an appropriate time for me to stop, I'll try to uh, respond to those if I can. Okay, so we want to get right into it. Matthew chapter 16 and begin in verse 24. Matthew sixteen twenty-four. Okay, and it reads as follows. <clears throat> then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me or wishes to follow me. He must deny himself. Folks, underline that in your Bible. He must deny himself. 
and take up his cross and follow me. Folks, I want to talk right now about denying. Because there are too many Christians that don't want to deny themselves. There are ministers in the pulpit today that don't want to deny themselves. They don't even understand what it means to deny themselves. Everything is about them. Everything is about what they want. Uh, It's all about them. And in order to be effective as a Christian, folks, we have to have what's called a spirit of humility. We have to be humble enough to deny ourselves and put the Lord first, okay? This is so important because there are so many people that are so focused upon themselves and they're doing it to the extent that their own needs are not being met and then they become discouraged. But the Word of God says that if we seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, what? All other things will be added unto you. They'll be given to you. God knows your needs. The Bible tells you that. He knows your needs. And God is going to bless you. He'll help you. He's not one that should lie according to what the Bible says. He's going to fulfill His Word in you. So why worry about everything that pertains to yourself, but put your focus on Him Put your focus on His Word. Put your focus on the Gospel. Put your focus on the people that are out there, His people. And folks, put your focus on souls. Somebody asked me, what is the most important thing that a Christian or that a minister can do? And I say always, souls, winning souls, and then bringing them into a living relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? It's not about a 12-step get-rich plan, how many airplanes you can... <clears throat> you know, um, add to your ministry or how many cars you can drive or what vacation spots you can get in every resort town in the world in the name of Jesus. Okay, that's an abuse of the gospel. That's taking the gospel and using it, as the Bible says, for sordid gain. And we don't need to do that. Paul said, he, he had it right when he said, I've learned to be content with much and with little. Okay, so we we have to have that. I don't worry about whether I have much and I don't worry about whether I have little because my focus is on the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? And and so, if you want to see breakthrough in your lives, okay, listen to what I'm saying, okay? If you want to see breakthrough in your life, and in areas, deliverance, healing, answers to prayer, you've got to learn to deny yourself. Everything can't be about you. There are so many people that have this attitude, my name is Jimmy, gimme, gimme, gimme. You know, that's their relationship with God. A genie in the bottle. You rub the lamp and you, you make your wish and poof, you know, you're supposed to get what you want. That's not the Lordship of Jesus Christ, folks. You know, we all know Him as Savior. Unfortunately, so many Christians really don't know Him as Lord. They mention, say the word Lord, and they mention Lord. But if you really understand what Lordship is, He's the one that makes the decision. He's the one that calls the shots. And... We're the ones that are shackled to the oars and row, we row. We do what He wants us to do. It's not the other way around. But there are many <clears throat> that profess themselves to be Christians that because they refuse to deny themselves, they go out and do whatever they want. They think that God will bless them in whatever they do and they end up leaving Jesus a mile behind them, coughing in the dust while they're out running around trying to do whatever they want in the name of the Lord. And then when it doesn't work, they get mad and blame God for it. See, folks, that is the way not to minister. That is the way not to be a Christian. And that is the way not to be effective in the end times we're living in. And that is one of the reasons the church is so impotent today, the organized church, majority of it, so impotent today. And, and, and while it talks a lot, people are not seeing the book of Acts. They read the Bible. They look at one thing. They go into a lot of church buildings and see something totally different, and it's a turnoff to them, and they don't want to come back. Okay, They need to see the reality in its ministers and in the people within the church. Okay, But that begins, and it can only begin when you begin to deny yourself Okay, and begin to put others and begin to put God's priorities ahead and make them your priorities. Okay, I hope you're getting what I'm saying this evening, okay? And I'm not going to be long. I'm going to be short to the point like I usually am. And then I'm going to leave it to you to take it to the Lord in prayer. And it's my hope and my prayer that this will speak to your heart the way that it has in mine. And and, and the Lord has certainly been speaking to me about this as I've been writing my third book, okay? And, And everything. Now, from there, I want to go to 2 Timothy. 
Okay, in 2 Timothy chapter 2. So I'm turning with my Bible. You guys can turn with yours to Timothy chapter 2, and we can see who gets there first. No, not really. Just get there. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'll give you plenty of time. Okay, and uh, we're going to begin verses in verse 3. We're just going to read two verses, verses um, 3 and 4. 2 Timothy 2, not 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, okay? Now listen to this very careful, and we're going to try to put this together, okay? The Apostle Paul is mentoring, and he's discipling Timothy. Now you've heard me kind of lay this kind of beginning in some of my other messages here because I've been kind of on this topic for a while about how Paul was being ready to be beheaded for preaching the gospel. He knew what his fate was going to be, and his concern wasn't about himself. He denied himself in order to mentor Timothy and Titus. Why? Because he was concerned about what the the uh, future of the church of Ephesus and the other churches would be once he was gone. Folks, we have to have a concern because we're only a heartbeat away from eternity. Uh, I read left and right about people that I know that are, that, that, that are no longer with us today. I, I mean, don't read it. I experience it, but I read it on, on social media. And there is no guarantee for any of us. I mean, we could, we could be here today, we're, we're, but we're one heartbeat away from eternity, like I said before. Okay, so we need to make the time that we have on this earth count. And in order to do that, folks, we have to deny ourselves and really focus in on the kingdom of God. But how many of you know that that's not always easy to do? And the apostle Paul was a person that understood hardship because he was about to be beheaded for preaching the gospel. Yet, in the midst of all of that, in the midst of being in a place where he knew he was being going to be beheaded, sitting in a dungeon, writing a good portion of the New Testament at that time, but in a, in a cold dungeon, we know it was cold because he asked, I think, Timothy to bring a cloak for him to keep himself warm. And this man was suffering, okay? But in the midst of suffering, not only did he endure hardships, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself there, okay, but he denied himself. He wasn't worried about, everything wasn't about him. Everything wasn't about what am I going to do. Everything wasn't about how am I going to get out of this. But his concern was for the body of Christ. His concern was for others. And I've, you've heard me say, if you've been following me on these studies, you've heard me say that every one of us, I don't care if you're a, a pastor or apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, whatever, or whether you are you consider yourself just the uh, regular Christian Joe or Christian Jane, you know, or whatever. We're all to do the work of an evangelist and all of us are to take the responsibility and try to mentor somebody. Take somebody, if it's a child, if it's a, a your son, if it's somebody in your family, maybe a fellow brother, a fellow sister, be, be willing to take them by the shoulder and, 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 and lead them to as, as much as you can towards that relationship with Christ if you have one yourself, okay? If you don't have a relationship with Christ, don't lead anybody, okay? Get the relationship first because we already have too many blinds leading the blind. What we need is men and women that have the Spirit of God, the anointing of God in their hearts. They have a real, true living relationship with the Lord. And they are able, folks, listen to me, to take that and transfer it, to take that and impart that, to take that and minister it to others and bring them along. I always say that as I grow up and, 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 and find myself growing older, that I look at the great evangelists that have been be, gone before us and the ones that I knew, and, and most of them are gone, the great evangelists, the great pastors, apostles, and, and different ministers, they've, they've done what God has called them to do on the earth, and they've, they've moved on to eternity, okay? They've graduated. But, you know, now we're in a generation where it's up to us. It's up to me in my generation to lead, okay? It's up to you, uh, whether you're in the pulpit or not, to, to lead, and, and we have got to take this message and this revelation and this relationship that we know of and be ready to pass it on not only to those in our generation that are coming up, but into the next generation, folks. You know, if the Lord tarries and doesn't come, we need to have that imparted and give that to him. This is what the Apostle Paul did. And we're reading what the Apostle Paul had to say to Timothy uh, here. But 
But folks, that was what was in the heart of that apostle and upon the others too, okay, was to take what they import, with what they had and to give it to others, all right? And so we need to see that. That's why it's so important and imperative that no matter what you're going through, uh, and I know there's, there are people here that are going through difficult times tonight. Uh, you're facing difficult things, and those things, if it's up to the devil, will occupy your mind uh, to the point that you lose your focus totally. But God is saying that, look, we need to focus on him and deny ourselves. As hard as that may seem, we've got to do it. Listen, if you do it, you're not going to be, folks, you're not going to be struggling and straining on your own. God will give you the grace, just like God gave the Apostle Paul the grace. The Apostle Paul, like I said, was on his way to being beheaded. He knew what was going to happen to him. Nevertheless, his concern was who is going to pass the proverbial football forward and go to the goal line once I'm gone? Um, Who's going to carry the gospel message forward when I'm no longer here to do it? And so in order to do that and to make sure that it was done in the manner that he wanted it done, he raised up uh, Timothy and he raised up Titus, two young men that probably not very many people knew about. They weren't famous figures. They weren't somehow, um, um, what would the right word be? They weren't... um, Okay, we'll just say they weren't famous people that you would expect to have taken the lead in anointing. They were just your, they were everyday Christians, but Christians that were hungry to the Lord, for, uh, for the Lord. They were pliable, they were teachable. And we need to maintain that teachable spirit ourselves too, so we can learn and then impart to others. Okay, and that's the point I want to get across, folks, that the only way that you can do that is to deny yourself. If you're focused on yourself, you're not going to be able to impart the Word of God to others. You want to know why? Because you're not focused on others. You're focused on yourself. Okay? That's what I'm saying. We need to get the focus off of ourselves. We need to have a greater vision and greater focus and greater desire and and a hunger for the kingdom of God, for the Lord Jesus Christ, for our love for Him, and then impart the reality of that love and the anointing that comes with it through the power of the Holy Spirit to others. All right? Second of all, okay, we want to get into the scripture that I had asked us to turn to in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, 4, 3 through 4, excuse me. And the Apostle Paul, in his second letter to uh, Timothy, is writing... <clears throat> Excuse me, in, in verse 3. <clears throat> I thank God, whom I serve with a clear conscience, the way my forefathers did. Is, is that right? Hang on, Second Timothy 2, 3 through 4. Am I right? Am I where I want to be? Let me see here. Oh, Second Timothy 2. Okay, I'm in the wrong... Uh, I'm in Second Timothy 1. So go with me to Second Timothy 2, my bad. Okay, 2 Timothy 2, 3 through 4. Here it is. Okay, he's saying to Timothy, so, okay, well, actually, let me, let me begin, actually, with verse 1. Okay, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You know, we, we're, we're, we're saved by grace, but we're empowered by grace also. So be strong in it. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard from me In the presence of many witnesses, here it is, folks, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. I mean, it makes my point right here. I didn't even see this, okay, until I just glanced at it just now. But it's saying, pass it forward. Take what you have learned and pass it on to others. He's saying, be the same example to others that I'm being to you. This is Paul speaking to Timothy, and he's saying, the things which you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, Entrust these, he's telling Timothy, entrust these to faithful men, to faithful women, to faithful children, okay? And then pass it on to them so to, to the people that will be able to teach others also. All right, so that's what we, we, we need to do. Then he says this, verse 3, Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. You know, I was making the comment, uh, in, in in actually writing my book last night, what I found out in in ministering over forty, I guess this will be my forty ninth year in ministry. Believe it or not, 
Uh, and over those 49 years, uh, I've had a chance to uh, attend a lot of churches, to visit a lot of churches, to speak in, in, in a lot of churches. Okay? But what I've learned is that, and what I've seen, and even when I go back and look at when I first started out, when I first started out, I thought I knew it all. You know, you, you, you don't know what you don't know, so it's hard to tell somebody always something because they're not ready to listen. They think they know. The reality, though, is that in attending these churches and in um, uh, yeah, having a chance to kind of scout them out and just kind of see what's out there, and, and even being a part of some of them at, at times in my life, I found out that there were <clears throat> many ministers leading churches and many Christians under those ministers and many Christians in general that have never gone through hardship. They don't know what hardship is. They preach, well, you know, I've, I, I've heard of them, we're devil stompers, you know, I'm, he's under my feet, he's under my feet, you know, and, and yet they've never gone through anything and then the first time something happens, they're running for the hills, running for cover, you know, um, because they bail out, they're high, like hirelings. They're there, but when the hardship comes, they're nowhere to be found. You see, we, we need to to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, as the Bible says. But the only way that we can ever get there is to be able to, um, number one, to deny ourselves. And number two, we have to endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. And as I was saying, and my point was, there are too many that are preaching from our pulpits today that they, they've got the gift of gab, a, a good, they, they talk a good game. Okay, let me put it to you that way. They talk a good game, but they've never been in the fight. You know, they can tell you all about what you should do, and they, they know all about it. You've got to listen, but they've never been through anything, and they've never experienced hardship. Folks, we're living in difficult times. Hardship is coming. Are you ready for it? The Word of God says, if you can't run with the footman, what will you do when the horsemen come? And so we have got to be in a place now where as we begin to see our world begin to shift and change, and certainly we begin to feel it here in the United States like we never had before, and we begin to see persecution coming and hardship coming, inconvenience coming, and we see all the things that are going on. I don't need to tell you. Just turn the news on and you'll you get a good teaching of it all there. But once you see it and, and you understand where what's going on in this world today, Folks, hardship is, is all over us, and it's coming, and it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse, okay? And um, But it's no reason for us to fear. God will give us the grace to go through whatever we need to go through, but we've got to be willing to deny ourselves and, in place of ourselves, endure hardship with Him. You know, put Him first. Be willing to sacrifice your wants and your desires for Him. There are many things I want. And many things I've desired through my life. I had a lot of those things and never made me happy, really. But but as I have grown in the Lord over time, I've learned that if I put the Lord first and attend to His business, He'll take care of mine. And, and when you learn to follow Him and just deny yourself, God will take care of you. Okay, that's a fact. And uh, that's why David, the King David said, I, 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 I was young and now I'm old. But I've never seen a, a man of God begging bread, okay? Because God will take care of you when you take care of his business. We just need people that are focused on him. So I want to encourage you tonight, and I hope this word does encourage you tonight to get your focus off of yourself and put it on the Lord, okay? And just don't, don't quit, quit, quit worrying about everything. Quit looking around and anxious and being, you know, taken down and, and uh, befuddled and be, be bewildered by anxiety because it's not of the Lord. If, if, if we're walking that way, it means that we really are not exercising our faith or our awareness in Jesus Christ and what he's done on the cross for us because he's given us the victory. But see, we can all say Christ has given us the victory and sing that, but we have to appropriate it by faith. We have to really trust the Lord in it, that and believe him. And if we do... And we just move in, get in motion. God will move with us. I always say, and I think the Word of God actually says, if you draw near to God, He'll draw near to you. So I always look at it like this. If I take one step, 
to the Lord, he'll take two steps to me. But you've got to take the initiative to take your step first because Christ already took the first steps when he died on the cross for you and for me. Okay, so now it's up to us to move forward towards him. Okay, that's what we need to do. But God is not going to force you to do that. He's created you as a creature of free will to do whatever you want to do. You get to make the choice. But wisdom would be because of what Christ has done for you to take steps towards him and focus on him and deny yourself and be willing to suffer hardship, knowing that the grace of God is enough, okay, to, to protect you, to cover you, and to help you endure whatever it is you have to go through. All right, so... I pray and that that this word this evening is an encouragement to you and will actually help you. It's a good this is a good foundational practical word for you. It's the truth, absolute truth. This is not a matter of opinion. I haven't spent my time talking about opinion and experiences and all the things that we hear a lot of times in other places. I'm not interested in entertaining anybody here or, or anything. I, I, I'm, I, my only concern and my only focus here is to preach a pure, unadulterated gospel and and, and minister it as clearly as I can so that that whether you're an immature young babe in the Lord or whether you're a mature minister of the Lord, you're getting what I'm saying and you're walking in it. Folks, and this word is is, is for everybody. It's for everyone that, that, that calls themselves a Christian. Okay, and Lisa, God bless you. I see you on. Um, you'll probably have to go to the beginning to watch this, but it's worth listening to. So I do hope you'll go back and listen from the beginning because I am about to wrap it up. I know there's others here, and I, I didn't see your names pop up or anything. But but listen, I appreciate all of you that uh, uh, tune in uh, every Tuesday night when I bring the study. Uh, when we get more and more people coming on. I also have uh, many of these messages transferred over to YouTube. Um, but you can go all the way back probably a couple of years or a year and a half at least here on Facebook Live and you can still hear my messages. So I pray that you'll go back and listen. There are some church messages on YouTube and some that I put on here where I've spoken in different churches and stuff. So, you know, if you need some uh, devotional time, you want to study the Word and um, you trust the Word that, 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 that I'm bringing, that it is the Word of the Lord and it's not just me. Uh, speaking to you or, or looking for an audience or something like that, um, then then listen to it. Let it be a, a, peer, a time of devotion and a time of Bible study for you, okay? Because it's all about the Lord. Uh, there's no big eye, little Jesus complex here, okay? It's about the Lord. All right, so again, I want to thank all of you. Again, if you have a share button, please. Uh, I ask you this only because all of you have friends that I don't know and um, I probably will never get to minister to. Uh, most of them personally but by hitting your share button you can take this message today and pass it on put it up there hey you know I listened to this it really helped me you know feel free to listen and somebody's going to listen to that and it's going to touch their heart and it'll help them okay and in doing that we're passing that word uh, forward all right so I pray that you'll do that God bless you too uh, Lorraine and thank you um, so anyway all right let's close with prayer right now Father I Thank you so much, Lord, for, Lord, enabling me, Lord, to bring this word this evening. Man, it's been a hectic, crazy day. Yes, for sure. But, Lord, you always give us the grace to do what we need to do. And I'm so glad, Lord, that I was able to uh, be able to minister this word this evening. And I pray, Lord, that you touch the hearts and the ears of those that have heard and the minds of those that have heard this word, Lord, and that it doesn't go in one ear and out the other, but, Lord, that it it, it resonates within their spirit and it bears fruit in their lives. Lord, I, I thank you so much for those that have come on tonight, Lord, and those that will come on later, those that are listening from overseas. Father, I pray you bless them, every one of them. I know we've got I've got brothers and uh, sisters from Pakistan, from Afghanistan, and other places that are listening right now, or that will be, you know, uh, uh, probably tomorrow morning or later tonight, late tonight. And, and Father, I pray that you touch them and that you give them protection and blessings. And Lord, that your grace and mercy, Lord, just, just cover them and rest over them tonight where they are. And Lord, that you'll strengthen these churches. Lord, you said that, the, that even though the gates of hell would come, that it would not prevail against your church. And so, Lord, that's what we're believing for 
for everyone, not only here, but those of our brothers and sisters overseas and in other places. In Jesus' name, and I thank you for it. Amen. Folks, again, I want to thank all of you for coming on, and uh, I encourage you, please um, keep me on your prayers. Um, we're all targets for the enemy, especially those of us that are in ministry. Um, the, Bi- I always, <laughs> the Bible doesn't say it, but I always say it. New levels, new devils. You know, when you step up to a new level, there's always a resistance of the enemy against you. So I can always covet and use, or I should say covet and use your prayers. Um, and, and so I ask you to keep me in your prayers. And at the same time, you know, um, I'm praying for all of those that come on and that participate, you know, in, in, in our, our, our studies here. So, folks, uh, that'll be it for tonight. And I hope to see you Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And like I always say, keep your feet on the ground, you head to the sky. We'll see you next week. Okay, God bless you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.